Hello and welcome to the How To Plumbing Channel. My name is Claude Taylor. For those of you that know me, welcome back. Those that don't, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, become a subscriber and give it a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, let me give you a little story on this uh, this house here. Uh, it was flooded, caught in a flood of, uh, in April uh, 2016. And now the home is being renovated. Uh, and of course, uh, my part is to change out the uh, plumbing. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do here is, we don't have any walls, ceilings, so this is great makes it a lot easier so I decided that I'm gonna come through here and we're gonna run PEX pipe um, just giving you a overview and showing you what we got in here this wall right here that's gonna be the uh, kitchen wall with the sinks and then we slowly walk back here <clears throat> there's a room there and this little spot here is this was where a uh, bathroom is and that bathroom's gonna go right back this is where the toilet and all the junk you see down there don't let that fool you there's stuff up under it blocking it from getting into the drain um, this here is going to be the uh, shower wall And let's see what we got here. We're walking into this was the uh, master bath, bathroom, uh, master bedroom. <clears throat> and in here we will be running uh, new PEX pipes. We won't be installing any new drainage pipes, but we will be connecting to them. Right here we'll have a hot and cold. Uh, PEX line coming down t to catch the hot and cold water and over in that corner there's the uh, toilet okay this one we need to put something down there the old galvanized plumbing was in here but uh, I came through here and ripped all of that out this is going to be another tub and shower there's the drain we need to plug that up <coughs> So, uh, we're not on the job site now. Actually, we're back at another location, and I am going to prepare the tub and shower valves here and make them up so they'll be prefabbed. So when I take them over to the uh, job site we're working, I can just set them in place. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is just going to put uh, two tub and shower valves together. <clears throat> And just showing you the uh, tubing cutter. If you what, what you seen just there is I turned the light on to it. You can look through a little window that they have, and I can see the mark <clears throat> right there on my pipe through that little window. And we just cut it out. It's really handy when they, hey, where you come from? Get out of here. Okay, now this is the uh, tub and shower valve. <clears throat> this is a uh, PEX tub and shower valve. Um, two of the ends, the uh, the shower end where the shower head comes out and the uh, spout where the uh, water comes out the bottom part. Those part, those ends will be soldered in with copper pipe. And you can see on the uh, right there at the right hand side right there that PEX fitting type okay it's gonna be PEX and the type of PEX that we're gonna use is Ubernor also known as Wurzbo this cover here that I'm just showing you there that's gonna go back on there <clears throat> and this is a mowing 
turbulent shower valve posi temp this is probably the most easiest uh, tub and shower valve that you can work with. I mean, I don't know a plumber that doesn't uh, go and install these. This is the cartridge that we're pulling out, <clears throat> and everything is being taken apart on the um, tub and shower valve so that um, when we go put the heat in soldering and sweating, the uh, copper and brass together <clears throat> we don't melt the washers like you see right here that washer right there all that stuff uh, we put too much heat and apply too much heat <clears throat> we could damage that so we're gonna take all that out and the part right there this is these are called the stops uh, stops meaning the cutoffs these are the cutoffs to the uh, turbine shower valve so with these you don't have to uh, cut the water off to the entire house you can just cut it right there and change the cartridge if that's uh, needed and of course here we're going to just clean these fittings up we're always going to clean the brass fittings and copper fittings up before we uh, solder or sweat any pipe together and put any flux in there And the caps, they're going to uh, go on to the uh, tub and shower now, but uh, eventually they're going to be cut off of there. But uh, just for now, we'll put them on there so that we put them in place, cut the water on, and we have something to stop the water while it's on, and we're testing the uh, system. And I know everyone's not going to run out and uh, purchase it unless they do quite a few jobs like uh, I myself do. But they are handy and yes, you can go out and buy the uh, manual small cutters. Uh, they're just as effective. Um, it's just that uh, these are a little faster. And I'm just using a little sand cloth here to uh, clean the uh, pipe up. And this is the uh, flux that we're going to use, the Ote. Made by Ote. This is not advertising for them, but uh, that's really the only flux I actually use is made by Ote. <coughs> like to do once uh, once I do put the fittings together after they're all fluxed up and together is uh, take a rag or a paper towel and just clean the excess flux that's uh, around the edges of the fittings and the pipe uh, it makes for a uh, nice neat uh, solder connection solder well and what I'm doing here with these uh, 
channel lock pliers is I'm kind of egg shaping the uh, pipe fitting and the pipe itself so that when I do go twist that pipe it locks in place so when I do go to solder or move it around the pipe won't fall out of the fitting it's uh, jammed in there pretty good with the uh, egg shaped and here's the uh, my rag that I'm used to wipe it clean it up and by the way this is probably the most um, soldering copper pipe soldering that's going to be done on this job site other than that everything's going to be PEX uh, but there are areas where you'll see copper and that this is be this will be one of them and then you'll see galvanized pipe on the uh, stub outs so I'll show you those later and throughout the video uh, galvanized stubs out it's because we want some type of pipe again here you see me egg shaping it before I uh, put it into the valve and now when I put it into the valve it's going to squeeze in there tightly and it's going to stay in place see how tight that is okay and back to the uh, galvanized pipe that we'll be using and the uh, copper and we're only using those in strategic areas where we need stability uh, PEX pipe is great but it's not a pipe that you want to use when stubbing out where valves and stuff like that needs to be cut off and on because you don't want the whole pipe moving you want it stable so that's where the uh, hard rigid pipe like this comes in play And this particular gas that I'm using with this um, torch kit here is uh, propane that you can pick up in any uh, uh, hardware store. Just about any hardware store. And I do have two sets. This is a smaller set that I use for small jobs like this. And then I have another one that settling and it's a much larger tank because uh, it's something that you can use and would go all day. And if you uh, would like to learn how to solder copper pipe, I also have plenty of videos on how to solder copper pipe here on YouTube. that you see me applying the uh, heat to the uh, brass valve and the copper pipe you can see how it would be uh, it, would, it, it could be an uh, issue with the uh, rubber washers or cartridge uh, getting melted if not totally melted they would uh, get it to a degree where it would probably damage it so the safest thing to do is take them out And you, uh, you really can't hear me. I mean, you can't, really can't see what I'm doing right now. But what I'm doing is uh, I'm taking the other tub and shower valve. I'm taking it apart. As uh, I let this here cool down a little bit before we start moving, or moving it around.
Okay, we don't really have a uh, workbench or anything like that here to uh, you know to work off. So we're gonna do we're gonna improvise and make something where we can set this a little stable and go ahead and solder this cap on here. It's not gonna take much. And this is the, uh, I guess we call it the uh, guide to guide you when someone is putting uh, the drywall back up on the wall and up over this or the um, Dural Rock uh, cement board. This is a guideline and it will keep you uh, right where you need to be so that you're not too far back in the wall or too far out you just use this as a guide okay here it is set up all in place nothing to it um, everything's put back together we even have the uh, shower head L. okay now we're here we're we're here back on the uh, job site and in this box, we have the uh, mana block. These are the fittings to the mana blocks, where, which we're going to use to uh, connect the pipes to the uh, mana block. These are the uh, templates of, you know, letting us know the locations of the hot and cold. And what particular fixtures is going to be tied in which particular spot. And though that's a, another template to cut uh, holes for the uh, mana block here so the pipes can run through this is the large manifold block this is where all the uh, the water from from the outside coming into the house will tight go into there and from there all the uh, water will be distributed throughout the house from here to the uh, kitchen sinks the lab sinks tub showers toilet Laundry, etc. And this is how it's made up. Hard, durable, plastic ABS piping. And you can see the big red key right there that's the key that's where you turn each individual um, valve off or on the red valve right there that you're looking at to the left side there's two of them right there those are valves to cut the water off there's blue ones on the other side and that key is used to cut those off and on and they did send two of them one is attached to the uh, Mana block in case a customer has an emergency, they can run out to their garage or wherever the uh, mana block is and grab that key and cut the water off to any particular fixture that might be leaking or maybe having a problem. Okay, <clears throat> what we're doing here now is uh, we're just kind of sizing it up and just getting an idea of where uh, a, a good location would be for this uh, mana blocks. So this look like a pretty good spot right here so uh, but we're gonna get this board right here out the way way to uh, remove 2 by 4s in a location like this is not to take a hammer and slam it and knock it out the way. What I'm doing here is I'm using a small reciprocating saw and I am just cutting the nails. Just the nails from up under it. Uh, and once I cut the nails, I just uh, knock it out of place without damaging 
more than we need to damage. You see right there, it comes right out now. So now we just pull this out our way. And I'm going to use this piece over again. I'm going to use it as a uh, backing. Backing mean a brace. It's just going to be a brace for the uh, new manifold that's going in here. Uh, again, here's the manifold. And this is the uh, manifold. This is the uh, bracket that we're going to attach the manifold to. And once we get that attached to that, our backing that we uh, are going to make up, we are going to uh, attach this uh, mana block to that. And that'll keep it nice and stabilized. And when I uh, ordered this uh, mana block, it uh, came with everything I need. <clears throat> now there are like uh, two to three different types of mana blocks. Um, this particular mana block, uh, it's useful for the uh, type of PEX pipe that I'm using. It'll work with basically any PEX pipe, but uh, I'm using Wurzbow. So there are mana blocks that they make that will not work with... Uh, Words bow tubing, but this particular one will, will because it is compression fittings. So all we're going to do is push do is push the pipe into the uh, fitting, and it's going to be compressed and tightened down, which you can use any pipe for that. Ubernor does make their own uh, mana block system. Uh, it's nothing like this. I think this is probably one of the best. Uh, mana blocks that I've seen out there. It's more organized and it's a lot neater and easier to work with. I mean, uh, Ubernor has a nice one that's made of uh, copper tubing, uh, but it's not as convenient uh, as this, I feel, as this uh, particular mana block here. So I went with this mana block this time. I did another video previous to this where I didn't use any mana block. I just actually made up my own uh, distribution box and I'll leave a description of that uh, video or a link to that video in the uh, descriptions below okay now that's gonna look pretty good right there Look like it's going to be nice and even. Even. And you've seen all the uh, stub outs. Stub outs meaning the parts that are coming out the side of the mana block. Uh, all these holes should pretty much line up with uh, all of those, making it easy to run the pipe through here and attach it to the uh, mana block. The, uh, in case you're interested, the uh, drill bit that I'm using is an uh, inch and a quarter because the uh, PEX pipe is going to be three quarter inch, but the outside diameter of that is going to be seven and eight. So we don't want too much play and we don't want um, one or two tight. So the inch and a quarter just happens to work out just right. I mean the uh, half inch pipe. Now you can see we got the uh, we have the uh, mantle block, the mantle block in place uh, where we need it and where we want it. And I do apologize for the lighting. This is probably the. Uh, best we can do right now because uh, all the uh, the electric in this house is cut off right now and 
we've got the garage door open giving us plenty of light uh, until we get into little dark corners and now we've got it here and I'm just kind of sizing it up because we're gonna we're gonna drill some more holes up at the top where the uh, three quarter inch lines will be coming into the uh, mana block and I'm just getting a measurement off of that board from as plumbers we always go we use center marks so from the edge of that board in that corner over there the center is uh, 15 and uh, they, what was that 15 and a half 15 three quarters so we want to line that up as close as we can to uh, the part of the pipe that's coming out at the top here And this drill bit here is, uh, this is inch and a half. And if you're wondering, this is an impact wrench that I'm using to uh, drill this hole that makes it uh, Makes it a little easier than a regular drill. Okay, now we've got that done, and we're back over here at the uh, in the master bedroom where we have the master bath, and we're gonna get something going on over here. Okay, now what you uh, see me doing here is uh, I'm going to uh, screw this as uh, PEX. Uh, Drop eared 90 is what they call it. Um, they also make it for copper pipe, and they're still a drop eared uh, 90, but this is a drop eared 90 PEX fitting. And the carpenters put uh, on the siding of the house, they put uh, plywood, which is good, it works out great for me. Oh, uh, there's brick on the other side of this. Um, I think uh, a lot of people out there, especially some of you that have PEX pipe in your home already, um, could appreciate uh, why I am using this uh, hard rigid pipe here. Because I know uh, the systems that they have in a lot of the homes, um, new homes that they're building, uh, they're just stubbing the PAX pipe right out the wall, outside the wall, and there's no, uh, nothing rigid about it. It's just so loose and it just looks scary. So when you go to reach up under there to cut a valve off, it's, it's kind of nerve-wracking. But uh, here, uh, when you reach up under your sink, you'll have a nice, sturdy, strong pipe. 
um, where you can turn the water off and on and if there's any issues it's uh, easier to uh, replace that valve or work on any uh, faucet up under your sink as long as you have a nice sturdy cutoff valve and a sturdy piece of pipe coming out the wall and um, a lot of the new homes that they're building today depending on where you live they're using a lot I noticed I'm running into it a lot they're using a lot of Zern PEX fittings and PEX pipe uh, yes there is a difference it's PEX but uh, the difference between the Zern and the Ubinor which I'm using here this is Ubinor is the opening of the uh, fitting if you look at the uh, wing 90 there the old opening at the top that is a true half inch opening it's the same size opening as the pipe itself whereas the uh, Zern the opening is just a little smaller than that half inch and a lot of inspectors do you know they kind of frown up on that smaller opening so this is uh, I would say this is probably the more preferred uh, pipe to use for to be on the safe side with the inspector uh, than the uh, Zern not to say the Zern's bad pipe it's just that the uh, the opening and the biggest thing that we find out in uh, plumbing is we need a uh, we, it's, it, we want to limit uh, water restriction in any pipe not too many turns not too many small areas to fit in and right here we're going to uh, this is where we're going to hang our um, turbine shower valve before we can hang it here we need to put our brace up something to screw the uh, wing eared or drop eared elbow to and this is the slot where the tub and shower valve is going to go and that's our backing for it again backing brace same thing and whenever you're installing a new tub and shower valve uh, any any re renovation or any new home um, the, you always want to set it at six foot six from the ground to the center of that pipe right there so this is six foot six from the ground and if you're a tall person you can appreciate it um, when you go to take a shower if that shower head is too low I know it's frustrating uh, I'm not that tall myself but uh, it's frustrating and six foot six is the most standard height for uh, most people Or should I say the most comfortable height? And we're going to put another brace right back here, another piece of backing to brace the valve itself. And that plastic covering on the uh, tub and shower valve right there. You want to leave it on until it's time to uh, install the uh, trim to the tub and shower valve because uh, the purpose it serves now is to guide the uh, guys that are going to put the drywall and the backer board up to make sure that they don't um, so to make sure that they line it up and it's protruding out far enough. because you don't want it sitting back too far in the wall if that's the case you would have issues uh, putting the trim work on there and trust me you just don't want you want to make it as close as you can to where you need to go and this little backing this is something that I made up um, I just took a piece of 2 by 4 and notched a piece out about the size of the uh, valve itself um, which I probably should have opened a little more which I will the uh, notch 
because the uh, PEX uh, fitting is sitting kind of back too far but we'll take care of that later but for now we're gonna get this mounted and anchored down And while I'm thinking about it, it's also uh, just a reminder that when um, when you're working on a bathroom and you're going to install a new tub and shower valve, also you're going to install a new tub. So the tub always goes in before the drywall or any uh, door rock goes on the wall because the tubs have lips on them and the drywall and the uh, towel just comes right over that uh, lip and also tubs come in right hand and left hand I ran into quite a few people that uh, went out and bought a left hand tub uh, not understanding that there is a left and a right hand tub only to get it to their house to find out they have the wrong tub so keep that in mind that uh, if you're going to do any renovation, know if you have a left or right hand tub. And if I was uh, facing the tub and the uh, cutoff valve was to my right hand, that would indicate that that is a uh, right hand tub. Vice versa the left. You can see on the uh, right hand side where the uh, piece of PEX of the shower valve is coming out. It's just about to touch that piece of wood. So later throughout the, uh, the video, I'll come back and I'll gonna, I'm going to chop off a piece of that so that uh, that PEX pipe will come in there without being jammed up in there. And what I usually do after I do, you know, use screws like this, um, it's going to protrude out from the backside. So once I'm done screwing it down, I just take a uh, pair of channel lock pliers and I will um, just break off the back end of it real easy. And it'll be nice and flush with the uh, board after that. And again, we want to keep this on. This is our, this is the guide for the drywallers and the tilers to know where they're at and um, things that are unpopular. And another thing that I see that that uh, that's really kind of frustrating is that once uh, these are in place, I've gone to homes where the uh, whoever installed the tub and shower valve you can see right there they see that angle if you have half inch drywall then the towel it comes out just right but anyway 
they have that shield on there and that bracing and uh, the shield they leave it on there so when you go to pull it off it's, you have to fight to get the thing off of there so that you can get access to the uh, get access to the uh, Tubbenshire valve well anyway here we are this is the uh, main water coming into the house we're on the uh, side of the garage so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this section out and we're gonna put uh, we're gonna come back with new uh, galvanized pipe we're still gonna use some galvanized pipes just uh, enough right here to uh, make it nice and rigid and sturdy so that when you go outside cut that valve off and on you have a nice sturdy piece of pipe to uh, hang on to And I do have a, uh, I have a video, this pipe that's coming up from the ground. Uh, I actually did a video on that where I brought, uh, I ran new PEX pipe from that valve all the way to the, uh, to the uh, water meter. So I'll leave a, uh, I'll leave a link to that uh, in the description below also. This is a uh, three quarter by uh, three quarter by half T. The half inch is going to be for the uh, outside faucet. Where you know, in case you want to water the grass or something. And this is the uh, this is the old uh, spigot that was on here, so we're gonna put that back on for now. And not only is the water off to the uh, valve right there, it's off. Uh, it's off to at the meter right now. Uh, after the flood, they cut uh, a lot of the uh, water off to the uh, homes around here. Yeah, we're back to manifold, and all of the work you just see me do is in preparation to run the uh, main. Uh, cold water line over to the uh, to here but uh, first what we're gonna do uh, of course we're using red and red is always an indication of hot but this red is going to go from the mana block over to where the uh, 
hot water heater is going to be which is um, the uh, near the kitchen area uh, it will be back to back the uh, water heater will be outside in the garage as well as the uh, laundry and on the back wall uh, those are the uh, holes that I cut for the uh, hot water heater and we're gonna pull this through and of course hot is always on the uh, left hand side so we're gonna pull the hot through for the uh, water heater uh, and again this wall is a back-to-back -back wall back-to-back -back from the uh, we've got the uh, kitchen sink um, ice maker and dishwasher all on one side and on this side the outside where the garage is we have the uh, laundry and water heater itself and this is the pipe going over to that area of where the uh, water heater is going to be <clears throat> and it is the water the uh, line is up high because the water heater we will sit it on a stand an 18 inch stand so it will stand up a lot taller and this will tie into the uh, mana block The uh, one thing about PEX pipe, you do want flexibility in it, so you don't want to stretch it too tight because you want it to be able to expand and contract, expand and contract because that's what it's going to do throughout the uh, course of the uh, life of the uh, pipe itself. And here are some more lines that we ran, and this is a half inch and here's the three quarter inch coal for the uh, hot water heater and if you ever see an electrician run wires that's basically the, the uh, basically the same thing we're doing here just like it's running wires and a mana block is just like a um, a fuse box where all the fuses and all the uh, electric come from your house into that box and distribute it from there the same thing same principle Now, can you see me good? And what you see, uh, you see, see me hammering on here right now is the anchor, and these are called talons. Uh, they're very popular with the uh, PEX system. Uh, you can also use it for copper pipe. Uh, any pipe that has the outside diameter of uh, five eighths. And if you're going to, uh, you know, run PEX pipe, uh, a second hand wouldn't be uh, bad. Uh, having someone giving you a second hand, helping you out. Right there. Kitchen sink. Yeah, well, no. And 
once the uh, you know once we have this PEX pipe in place and the house is uh -huh. being yeah, used and water is constantly being used, <laughs> this uh, this PEX pipe will begin to relax and it will relax and it won't be bunched up like you see it now. It'll be in more of a relaxed uh, state. And of course that red one right there, we're going to need to pull that a little tighter. Here's the uh, PEX pipe coiled up, and we're leaving it in the uh, package, and it unravels as we pull it out. Um, you don't want to make a mistake, and I've done this myself, is I've taken it all out of the uh, package, and once you do that, the uh, pipe is everywhere, and it's really hard to work with. This is the easier, easiest way to uh, work with the uh, PEX pipe, is to keep it into the... Uh, Keep it in the um, packaging and pull it out as you need it. Okay, what we have here, we have a uh, we have a laundry box equipped with laundry valves, hot and cold water. It's copper sweat connection so what we're going to do we're not going to run into copper pipe and it's not a uh, PEX system you can buy uh, and this is, of course is the ice maker you can buy them to where they uh, already have a PEX uh, connection at the end of it so happen these don't so we're going to use a uh, half inch uh, copper to PEX Sweat, sweat adapter, and we're gonna solder that on to the uh, right there. We're gonna solder that on to that piece of uh, brass right there, and now we can convert it from sweat pipe to PEX pipe. And we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, laundry. And again, we uh, left the job site, and we're here in the garage. We're gonna piece this together so that the uh, when the next day come. And we have a chance we can go back over there and uh, install it. Uh, a lot of this work, a lot of this work is not done on the job site because I do have a regular job and I am uh, going back and forth from that job and doing it when uh, uh, I can uh, get over there. But I am going to have to move a little faster because the uh, other contractors they are kind of moving pretty fast and I need to keep up with them so this helps me uh, stay a little ahead of the game so when I'm at home I can come home and do this stuff and this is the laundry bags again and what I just showed you is the you see the three outlets, you could e use them for either or, either or meaning you could e use them for the uh, valve itself like we're doing here, or we can use that same slot that we just put the valve in, we can use it for the uh, drain. So those valves can use, be used in any one of these holes and the drain itself can use, be used in any one of these holes. It depends on the configuration of the plumbing and that's what makes it so convenient. It's uh, what you call um, universal. It's a universal laundry box. And this one will be used in the upside down position. And you can see there's another two inch. Uh, you can't see right now. There's another two inch opening that we're going to uh, connect to the drain rather than the uh, three on top. So the one in the middle will use the uh, blank. Uh, cap that we're going to use to cover that one up.
And again, here he is, the uh, connector. This is a transition fitting. They call it a transition transition fitting because it transitions from copper or brass to PEX pipe system. And right here we have this is I carry this all the time on a van. This is uh this is just a little toolbox that I keep a lot of my um copper um uh, tools in. Where I, you know, copper cutters, sweater, uh flux, solder, stuff like that. Uh it helps keeps a little more organized. I know it looks a little junky right now, but uh <coughs> This, uh, it comes in handy and this is what I use for the uh, bigger um, system when I'm using running a lot of copper probably all day long and I use a lot bigger tank this is the small one that I use for small jobs like this this is the propane bottle that you can get from any hardware and of course this is the uh, torch setup that we use and I like it because you don't need a striker. You just click the button. And there you go. You got your fire. And you also have the other button. In case you don't want to have to hold it down, you can hit that button. And it will automatically hold it itself. And it leaves your other hand free to uh, use the uh, solder. And this is the solder that we're going to use. This is lead-free solder. Also, you can, some people might call it 95.5. Back in the day, we used to use 50-50, but now they know the damage to lead could do to you, so it's been eliminated. And this is the uh, flux that we're going to use. And my flux brush. And I usually just, uh, after I open it up and haven't used it in a little while, I kind of just stir it up, kind of mix it back up, get it going. And again, I do have uh, other videos out there uh, in case you're interested in interested in learning how to uh, solder copper pipe. Um, I have plenty of how to solder copper pipes videos on YouTube. You can just type in my name, Claude Taylor, or just type in how to plumbing, and it will pull all my videos right up. And it is important that you clean all the fittings for the uh, brass and the copper. Before uh, putting any flux on there. Always brush the end of the fitting with the uh, wire brush because I also want the uh, flux to get into that and the uh, the solder. I want it to get as much solder on there uh, as I can um, without uh, flooding the pipe and uh, cutting off circulation. But we want do want a nice uh, solder connection. Again, you can buy this laundry box with the valves and the adapter already on there. Um, just so happen we just have this one laying around, so we 
Hey, let's just go ahead and convert it to packs and use it. Notice how I uh, solder the uh, two connections together that the uh, I'm never trying to uh, aim the fire towards the electric, I mean the uh, plastic box. I'm constantly having the fire facing the uh, opposite direction of the plastic pipe so that we don't uh, take any chances of melt that or do a damage to it. And the setting we have here is a true setting. I mean, when you're on a job site, um, you don't have the time or the uh, the availability of uh, brackets and things that you need that you would like to have to uh, hold your pipe steady or the fitting that you're working on ste uh, steady. So here you just have to improvise. And well, I'm just using my uh, little uh, toolbox and just setting it and lightly soldering it. But if you feel you need to have some type of brace or vice, I mean, that's great. Go ahead. Go for it. It's another day and we're back on the uh, job site and this is the uh, laundry box that you see me working with in the uh, garage all put together and we're gonna put it in place now of 
course, the uh, water lines will be coming from the uh, top. And again, as a reminder, the red valve is for hot, the blue is for cold, and hot's always on the left, cold's always on the right. And here we are on the uh, far east side end of the house where uh, I am going to make a hole in this uh, brick and I'm using a chisel and you can buy this chisel at almost any hardware store <coughs> and this hole here is going to be for the uh, outside faucet You can go out and rent a um, hammer drill and cut this hole, but uh, if you're going to do it a lot, it's probably worth it, but uh, if you're not going to do it as much, uh, this is probably the best and easiest way to go ahead and attack it and uh, save your money in renting the uh, hammer drill. And all I need to do is make it big enough to get a half inch uh, piece of galvanized pipe in here and once I make this opening right behind it you can see the uh, two by fours I don't know if you can see it real good but the two by four and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna drill through that two by four so that when we uh, put the galvanized pipe in it's gonna go straight into where we need it and where we can connect, connect to the uh, PEX pipe system and again, using galvanized pipe, making this this spot right here uh, nice and sturdy for cutting off and on water or any repairs that may, may need to be made. And some people do like to hang their water holes on the uh, outside faucet. Uh, this will make it nice and sturdy so it just uh, doesn't come, uh, come loose. And what you see on the end of this drill, you see the, uh, of course, you see the uh, drill bit itself, but uh, the drill bit is attached to an extension. The drill bit is not actually that long, and you can also get that extension by that extension. As long as you want. So happened, I got lucky, and uh, just enough of a drill bit to make it to where I need to and here it is on the other side it got stuck in there so we're just gonna grab our uh, channel like pliers and just pull this out because we've got the hole that we need and now we can run our galvanized pipe straight through here and attach it to this end with the uh, PEX pipe And remember, I'm on the outside just pushing this piece in, and I'm leaving, leaving the uh, safety cover, the threads, to, to keep the threads from getting banged up so that we can thread um, an elbow on the end. And that hole end up to, I end up being a little off, so I had to make the hole a little oval shape to make the, to get the galvanite to fit in there. Again, here we're on the outside. And the other hole that you're seeing right next to that one, that hole's been there, and that's the hole for the uh, heating and cooling system. The uh, um, refrigerant lines will be running through there. Some of you uh, call it, uh, well, refrigerant lines. And this is just a, a random piece that I bought uh, at Home Depot. It's about uh, two and a half, three feet long. I'm not sure. I don't remember. 
but it's long enough to reach where I need to where needed to so that I can tie onto the other end with the apex pipe and have the the uh, other end uh, protruding out to the outside where we can put the outside faucet and again this is the, another one of the oh, the old one that was on here um, so we're just gonna put that back on here for now because when we come back we're going to install new ones and also we're going to install the siphoning um, devices on the ends of the uh, valve spouts and now we're this is back on the uh, west side of the house this is uh, if you remember when I started working on the uh, main water coming into the house so again, I bought a piece uh, of uh, pre-cut galvanized pipe from uh, the hardware store, Home Depot, just long enough to make it in there where I can uh, catch on to it with an elbow. And I think this piece is 11 inches long. I'm not, I don't remember, but uh, I remember measuring it, but it's been a while. But it's in there, and it's going to reach just to where we can need it. And what I need to do is try to get it started from here on the outside here and go ahead and tighten it out here. And the water that you hear running is from the house next door. Uh, one of the guys that's doing some painting uh, is cleaning his brushes. back on the inside and this is where the 90 gonna go and that 90 will Now back at the uh, mana block. These are the uh, stickers indicating uh, what that uh, line is going to. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was one of the laundry stickers. And that was the hot going to the laundry, I believe. And what I've done here is I put a cover over the uh, mana block. So when I left uh, in the evening or when I left the, uh, from working there, I put it over the uh, mana block so it'd be protected in case any of the workers came through and didn't want anything to fall on it, anyone to uh, run into it and, and uh, this, you know, break it or anything so <clears throat> now we've got it uncovered and uh, here that's better lighting and to show you the uh, compression fittings and again when you buy the mana block all of these fittings will come with the mana block itself
this is the tool that we use to uh, that this didn't come with the box I had to order this separate this is made just for these uh, fittings right here to tighten it down And the cutters that I'm using here, you can purchase uh, at just about any hardware store. And again, all these fittings come with the uh, mana block itself. And they can be used with uh, any um, type of uh, PEX plumbing pipe or plumbing tubing. This is the ferrule. This ferrule, uh, as a matter of fact, the blue one that I did below this one, uh, I forgot to put it on there. So I took it back off and I did put that ferrule on there. And all of these are compression fittings. You can see how once it gets in there and you compress and compress the fittings together, it's going to be a nice tight fit. And what I've done is I tightened it as tight as I could. Uh, well, I wouldn't say as tight as I could, but as tight as I felt comfortable with before um, <clears throat> turning the water on. So, so when I got it nice and tight, I turned the water on to the building. And then I just, uh, if there was any tweaking needed to be done, I did it then. Um, and again, this is the tool that they make for it. And it doesn't come with the mana block. You have to order it separately. And that's going to be repeated on and on on the uh, mana block. We're going to uh, we're going to focus this on the uh, supply to the hot water line right here. This is a uh, okay. Again, this is a uh, drop ear 90, but this one here is three quarter inch because there's three quarter inch that goes into the uh, home water heater.
You can see uh, on that uh, piece of wood, I'm right at a knot, and a knot is usually hard to cut. either cut or uh, run a screw through. And these are the uh, three-quarter inch galvanized nipples that uh, we will be tying into the uh, water heater once the wall is up and the water heater is in. And right now we're just setting there, that setting it there temporarily, because normally we would uh, we would put some type of a uh, Teflon tape or pipe dope on there. And you could see how that would make it nice and sturdy. And here we are using the uh, PEX expander tool we're really not getting a good visual here but we'll have plenty uh, we've got plenty more to do you'll see it And if uh, you do you know, decide to buy uh, some PEX pipe, make sure that you get the uh, Ubernor PEX pipe. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using this uh, expander tool with uh, any other type of um, PEX tubing. Um, some of them are a little more rigid. Uh, I just wouldn't uh, recommend it. I actually don't use them. so. But I noticed the uh, texture and the uh, pipes are different, and I don't know if they expand as well. But keep in mind, um, Ubernor pipe, and if you're going to use this tool, use Ubernor pipe. Now these pieces of uh, these galvanized pieces that I'm putting in the nipples. I'm uh, just going to screw it in so tight, and that's about it, and we're going to leave the opening. We're not going to cap it because I'm going to use a uh, flex line from one to the other to make a complete connection uh, as if the water heater was in place, but it's not, just so that uh, I can use that to um, test out the, uh, test out the uh, water piping. And make sure that there's no um, no leaks without uh, waiting to have the water heater in place because we want to check it before any walls or anything is put up. And another great thing about running this uh, Ubernor PEX tubing is that um, all your fittings, the weakest connection to any pipe or a chain, the weakest connection is going to be at a connection. So there's no connections in the attic itself when the pipes run across the ceiling. All the connections are down below where you have access to them. So if you're going to have any issues, usually it's going to be at the connections. But uh, with this pipe here, I haven't experienced it. So, And here we're back on the other side of the uh, where the water heater is. Uh, this is going to be the uh, kitchen area. So we're going to um, we're going to put our drop eared 90s here, um, half inch again. We're going to use uh, three for the kitchen sink, and that is because that is because uh, one hot, and one cold to the faucet, and then we have another hot that's going to go to the uh, dishwasher. But they're all going to come out from up under the uh, cabinet, uh, right next to each other. And this is just another piece of uh, backing that I made up to hang the uh, 
drop air 90s to so that we can stabilize our pipe and has, have some stability. And of course, this one here is going to be for the uh, dishwasher. I'm just keeping it a little bit away from the uh, the sink uh, stub outs. Now all we have to do is bring our PEX pipe down to these uh, fittings and and that's it. We'll connect them. That's a lot easier than when we did it back in the day when we did it in copper and galvanized or any other pipe. Uh, it's much easier. And the color coding makes it very easy also because there are times that uh, plumbers, including myself, we've uh, cross pipe. You know, the hot and the cold, but uh, this makes it very difficult to kind of cross the pipes. We know that the red's for hot and blue's for cold, so it's kind of hard to uh, mix them. I mean, it's possible, but uh, but hardly. I had a guy ask me on a video why, you know, if you're taking the galvanized pipe out, why would you put galvanized pipe in? Which is a good question, but um, my response is um, I'm not uh, replacing um, the old galvanized with old galvanized. I'm replacing it with new galvanized. So there's nothing wrong with new galvanized pipe. I mean, if you sit here and imagine trying to run this whole house with a galvanized pipe right now, you know it would be very labor intense. But uh, if we're running with the PEX pipe, it's a lot easier, and I am using the... Uh, galvanize only where it's necessary to make it sturdy so there's nothing wrong with the galvanized pipe as long as this new galvanized pipe And I don't put the uh, cutoff valves on just yet because uh, for many reasons. I'll give you that reason in a second. Um, I'm taking that off because it doesn't have a stop on it. 
I want one with a stop so it doesn't rise up on the uh, pipe itself. And a stop means there's a little ridge in there that keeps it from pushing it back up on the pipe. And you see how the expander works. It expands the pipe and at the same time it's uh, expanding and you can notice it makes turns and that helps it. And there you go. Bam. We're done. If we would have done this in uh, completely in galvanized or copper pipe, this would this would be a little time consuming. Get out of the way. And again, back to the uh, caps that I have on the end of these. Uh, I have the caps on there and not the valves because once they drywall, tape, and float, paint, all that stuff will get on the valves. And uh, not only that, uh, it makes it a little harder for the uh, drywaller to uh, make his cut his holes and make it nice and neat. So therefore, we cap it. And we'll come back later, uncap it, and put the cutoff valves on there. And here we are again. This is for the, uh, what is that? The dishwasher. This is the hot for the dishwasher. And that's going to be the hot for the kitchen sink, etc. So these little tags come in very, these are very handy. Uh, if you have a box like this and you need a plumber to come to your house and come to work, let them know where this box is. This will this will uh, save you some time and some money, so he don't have to search around. It'd be very convenient and and cut time down. He don't have to cut it off to the whole house. Or she, sorry. You can see how easy this mantle block is to work with and connecting these uh, PIX pipes to it. And again, Ubinor, they do have their uh, their own mana block. This is not an Ubinor mana block. This is, uh, I'm actually not sure who makes this one. But they have three different types, and this particular one is just perfect for what I need right now going to the uh, Ubinor PEX piping. So if you're going to, going to get a uh, mana block, Make sure you get the right one, because they all look, they all look just alike. Uh, if you don't look at them closely, you're gonna you're gonna grab the wrong one. So make sure that you get one that looks like this with the compression fittings, and not the fittings that are already made up for Zern uh, plumbing system. And this is the hot, this is the cold actually. Well, this is the hot coming in from the hot water heater going into the uh, mana block, which will feed that left hand side of all the uh, hot lines from the uh, water heater. And if you're going to use channel lock pliers, anything to tighten this down, you don't want it too tight, just snug enough because it does have the o-rings where you don't have to uh, really 
crank down on that. This is the uh, adapter to the mana block from the uh, compression from the uh, PEX pipe, the Ubernor PEX pipe. And what we're doing here, it's going to be a compression fitting. Again, any pipe would work with this. Any copper pipe, any other PEX pipe, or uh, Ub um, Zern pipe, or even uh, CPVC. By the way, I'm not a strong CPVC uh, type of person. I really, really just don't care for it myself. Now you see that paint that's scraped off of that red there? You're going to see just why that paint, that little uh, covering was scraped off. Because when you fit this piece on here with the um, ferrule, it's a ferrule inside of it, a little brass ring. It's, it's just snug enough just to get over the pipe and it's going to scrape a little bit. But there's no harm done. Uh, pipe's still very effective and won't leak. And on compression fittings, um, pipe dope or uh, pipe compound is not recommended on use it, to use on um, compression fittings. Most compression fittings are a nice dry fit. Uh, and we let the uh, ferrule and the compression do the work itself. And whenever, ever, you're going to thread any kind of connection to plastic piping, be very cautious. Uh, plastic is very easy to um, cross-thread. And you notice I kept going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I went back and forth, and then eventually you feel that groove that it fits right in, then you go for it. But if you don't feel it, if it's tight right at the beginning, no, don't don't force it. And that cold water is going up to feed the hot water tank. And that's going to feed the hot water tank. And the black the red one's coming back to from the water tank. And the other, there'll be a third. Uh, three-quarter inch blue right here this will go to the uh, main water line that comes into the house so we're going to splice that right in here And if you can, always get the, uh, the little white ring there. Get the ones that have the stops on them. Meaning, the stops meaning there's a little ridge that you can't push it all the way completely over the pipe. 
because that little ridge will stop it that's called the uh, stop so you want the uh, ones with the uh, stops Here we have, uh, here's the PEX pipe. This is how it comes in a bundle. And if you've seen the uh, beginning of this video, uh, there was a part where I was working with the uh, PEX pipe and I was explaining why we keep it in the uh, wrapper. So all we want to do is open it up. The directions actually are right there to tell you. We just want to open it up and we just want to find the end one end start pulling it from that end and we use it from the bundle as we need it we pull it out um, I made the mistake before is where when I uh, opened the whole bundle and just let it all out um, and that really kind of made a mess I mean I worked with it um, it wasn't really bad but I mean this makes it a lot easier if you just keep it wrapped up Okay, now we've got some new PEX pipes. We're going to um, get our uh, main line tied in right here. The main line from the outside faucet, out, just outside the brick wall to to here. And this is going to feed into feed into this system right here. Again, I wouldn't recommend trying to use this expander tool on any other uh, PEX pipe other than um, PEX pipe that's made by Ubnor. And again, Ubnor, Wurzbo are the same product. And you see on the end of the galvanized pipe, I have a uh, PEX uh, transition fitting from galvanized to, uh, or iron pipe to PEX pipe. And here we are back on the outside. Give you an idea. We're going to take that uh, insulation. We're going to wrap it up a little tighter later. Now we're here back into the, uh, this is the uh, hall bathroom on the uh, east side of the, uh, of the house. And just as we've done with the uh, kitchen and the master bedroom, we anchored down our um, wing 90s and we're just going to run our PEX pipe straight to it. Again, blue on the right, red on the left, hot, red, blue, cold. And we're going to stretch that blue in a little bit more so we can get that little wave out of there but 
at the same time we're still going to keep some slack in there so that we can have room for expanding and contracting And you can see how I have the uh, galvanized pipe anchored down so that when I'm on the outside working on it, I can um, move it around without uh, worrying about damaging anything inside. And here uh, we are, my son's giving me a hand. We're kind of making the pipe a little neat, uh, clamping them together as they go for the long hey, run across you no, you're good. You're good. from the uh, hall bathroom all the way over to the uh, garage area. Again, once this uh, system is in use, and also with the heat in the attic, these pipes will, they will relax, and they will set in place, and they won't be all bunched up, um, st sticking up in the air like they are now. And those are the pipes going over to the uh, master bathroom. Here's the... Um, Remember, back at that backing, I told you we chopped that piece of wood out. We did. <clears throat> and this is all it takes to connect the um, tub and shower valve up. And that's it. And that right there is the going to be the toilet and the toilet pipe is usually six inches from the ground up to the center of the pipe and this is going to uh, be the bathroom sink And 
and this is the hall the bathroom in the uh, hallway the shower tub and shower valve Again, my name's Claude Taylor, and thank you for joining me on my journey of plumbing. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber and watch weekly uploads. Thank you.